Hello. Just doing a quick video on my uh, ESP LTD EC1000 Faded Cherry Traditional. Uh, I bought the guitar from Musician's Friend online. It was their stupid deal of the day. And uh, I'm really impressed with it. Uh, very good fit and finish. Um, excellent deal from the, even the stupid deal of the day. Just going over all the angles of it. It's just really well done. It's perfectly buff. There's no uh, orange peel in the paint. All the bindings just flawless. I can't see anything wrong with it anywhere. It's like a polyurethane finish on it. It's fairly thick. Uh, looks like a very durable. And the guitar's got a lot of uh, good hardware on it. Good uh, parts. Uh, the tuners are a locking tuner. There's the little knurled locks in the back. Which makes it nice for changing strings, uh, especially with the fact that the bridge and hardtail piece are locked as well. Show it there, but there's Allen head set screws in both. So you lock them tight to the guitar body, basically limiting any possible vibration or movement that could, could occur. It's got your tunematic kind of copy of a bridge, but there's no buzzing in it. It works very well. This would be a quality piece. Uh, the humbuckers in this one are Seymour Duncan's, a JB and a 59, I believe. I'm not sure I'd have to read the the specs on it, but either way, they sound fantastic. Um, give a nice, warm, round sound. Uh, switching. Oh, actually, it's on right now too. It's how quiet it is. Uh, no uh, buzzing or noise or grounding issues at all. Uh, switchings, you know, your uh, bridge pickup, both neck, and then also you can have your volume, volume, tone. So you can cut one volume off and use the switch as a kill switch if you want. I think Ace Freely does, or did, does. Uh, the bezels are all nice, that nice uh, kind of uh, off white uh, cream color. Uh, easy to adjust everything. The neck is uh, actually well done with uh, I like the flag inlays. They're all perfectly inset. There's no gap on them at all and very well done. Um, it's got an ebony fretboard, not rosewood. So I like the color. just that much darker. It hasn't been oiled or anything. It's all as it came from. Uh, music one, two, three. It was very smooth to the touch. If you reach on the strings and touch it, it's uh, there's like no friction there at all. It's good that way. The nut is quite tight. Um, I have changed the guitar strings. It came with tens, I believe, and then I've changed them down to nine forty twos. And even with the nine forty twos, adjusting the machine has you know dropping to D or whatever. They can hang up a little bit, so uh, they're really tight in there, almost like a PRS style nut, but uh, I might look into opening them up a little bit so they adjust a bit better. So that's one item I found, actually I come to think of it's about the only item I found wrong, <laughs> wrong with it in any way. Uh, this one is made in Korea, look at this the right way. <laughs> So, your typical don't throw in the garbage decals. Unfortunately, they're put on there now. Has a nice volute there too, uh, ESP, but really strengthens the, let's see the angle on that. Strengthens the headstock, so help to avoid it if we're breaking off, uh, like a Gibson, Les Pauls are famous. Well, could happen too if they're accidentally dropped. You know, if they're not dropped, they'll have no problems, but. So, uh, just going over this, oh, it has the jumble frets too. So, uh, it's almost like it's scalloped. I haven't had a guitar with jumble frets before. 
But uh, since this one does, um, is there's like no friction at all. When you pull, I don't know if it'll work. When you actually press the string to the fretboard, it pulls it a bit sharp. So with very little uh, effort or pressure on the frets, any any where you, where you tap it. Um, the note will play and bends like so easy. Just right across the whole fretboard for bending. That is with nines on. With tens, it was a bit harder, so that's why I switched it out right away. But I put nines on everything, so it's just what I like. Um, let's see what else here. Put a few notes down. It came with a hang tag on it, but it's just for the strings. It has some special coded strings. So unfortunately, the new guitar doesn't come with an ESP hang tag. It's, uh, it's too bad, kind of neat when they do. Uh, imagine the Japanese one probably would. I don't know the actual ESP, not the LTD. Uh, you can't split the coils on it, which is too bad. Uh, I really wish you could split them, even though they sound clear. And uh, it's both the first guitar I've ever had you, you use the tone control on it. Usually I just leave it at 10 all the time. But this one, you actually tone it down to uh, kind of change your tones. It's that clear and that, but it's not tinny at all. It's not thin. It's just clear. So you can actually use a tone, especially on a smaller amp. I have a Fender Pawn Shop Greta, and I tone it down on that quite a bit. And it makes it sound very well. And input jack's okay. Just a two screw input jack, kind of wish it was four, like a Les Paul would be. But saying that, if I ordered a Les Paul and I got this guitar with the Les Paul shape, not the sharp cutout and all that stuff, I'd be pretty happy. It's it's very well done, like uh, no problems at all with this guitar. It just feel it's heavy. I think Tone King did a uh, review on this. It's full two inches thick. Uh, it's not heavy as in I don't want to carry this, but it's solid heavy as in like you're getting a real, real guitar here. You know nothing's. Uh, there's no lightweight or kind of low grade products or woods or anything involved, uh, installed in it. Um, so I ended up getting this one. I couldn't get it shipped to Canada through mu Musician's Friend. I had to get it through uh, UPS. So I just ordered it online from Musician's Friend and picked it up at a UPS uh, outlet in uh, down in the States. So I had to do that. I think some couple places carry ESP in Canada but they're nowhere near me and they usually don't have a whole bunch of stock they have like one or two guitars that might be about it uh, one place I saw I had black ones with the EMGs my black guitar bodies but I really wanted that that flame on this one photos I saw on this flame job were not very good from ESP like uh, they're kind of all like a pastel color in the photo but when you actually get the guitar, it's very deep, clear. It's not faded at all or satin. It's all gloss. And just an excellent job. So they kind of didn't do themselves justice on how good of a guitar they have. The site only has one picture, and it's not a very good picture of it. So you can't get this one anymore, I don't think. I think the new ones have the uh, binding all the way around the thick uh, pearlescent or abalone binding all the way around. So there's my LTD, let's see now, ESP LTD EC1000T CTM Faded Cherry Burst. So <laughs> I have to write it down what it's called, but it's a fantastic guitar. Uh, sounds awesome. I'll get my, my son to play a little bit on it, but it's just his quality everywhere. Now this is now the guitar we grab, like, it's like, one guy plays this, first guy to it, and then someone else has, the next guy has to play the, whatever else is left over. It's just a, a really good uh, instrument, that's for sure. Okay, hope you enjoy this video. Um, I'll put some pictures or notes in it uh, as I go along, if I think of anything else to, to note about it, but it's just kind of simple, traditional for sure. It does have that uh, ESP cutout, which I wasn't a big fan of, but now I kind of like it. 
Uh, it's just a bit different, but definitely close to a Les Paul, but honestly for the value, I'd get this before I got a... This is kind of priced in Les Paul Studio range, and it's... I can't see him coming close to this. Uh, this would be the better deal, I would think, but up to you, depending on what you want. Uh, it's got the Duncans in it already, so you don't have to replace your Gibson pickups with Duncans in it. Uh, so, anyway, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. I'll hopefully put updates in there and stuff, and uh, have some footage of it being played. Alright, thanks, have a good day, goodbye. Hello! Just a few things I forgot to mention on my last, uh, or first section of the video, I guess it would be. Uh, the reason how I got to choose this guitar over, say, some of the Fender Group, Jackson, EVH, Fender, or Gibson, uh, Les Paul Studio, or Epiphone, or any of the big models, you know, Ibanez, uh, all the big manufacturers, ended up with ESP kind of by going through the specs, and what I wanted was a 24 and 3 quarter spec, or sorry, scale length, with 21 or 22 frets. This one has 22. And uh, the reason for that is I wanted the shorter length so I can get the higher tuning uh, with least amount of tension, or lower amount of tension, I should say. And I never really used the upper frets, like never 23, 24. I barely used these ones. So I uh, mainly playing down low lower section of the neck for most part, then some middle, the odd time comp here, you know, when I go through a song on YouTube and follow the tabs. So, didn't really need the 24 frets or the long scale length. Uh, I wanted something with humbuckers. So, you know, other guitars have that, fenders or whatnot uh, as an option, but of course this one does too. I wanted a, uh, one of the classic shapes like uh, Strat or Les Paul or something like that. Didn't really want a Flying V or Warlock or something like that. Not that there's anything wrong with them. I would want one, but for this guitar, I wanted one of the classic shapes. So, uh, another thing I wanted was big frets. I never had Jumbo before, as I mentioned before, but uh, just wanted some with good frets. And this one has, I don't know, I actually measure them, but they're a bit wider than your average fret. Or the, the string width is a bit a bit narrower. It's within a millimeter either way, but it's hard to go off the cliff with these ones. There's a bit of quite a bit of room for both E strings to move before they hit the edge. And also, all the ends of the frets are very rounded and very smooth. No sharp spots at all. I don't know how they got them so smooth. Uh, it's almost as if they cast or were made that way to that length, but. I'm sure they're snipped like every other one and then rounded and then they're extremely smooth. Uh, binding's very well done up the neck too and all that. And the neck shape is great in this one. I wanted something not quite wizardy but very uh, narrow or thin I guess you would call it. A shallow U shape. And this one has that. Um, it's uh, tapered to the neck but no taper to the radius on the frets. They're uh, the same the whole way through. I see a lot of Fender groups having or changing their uh, frets to, to taper all the way through, but this one's the same. Uh, and uh, what is that with two volume controls so you can use this as a kill switch, your toggle, or some other way of doing it? But at least two volumes. With one volume, it's kind of limiting. I find a little bit two volume gives you a bit of an option. Uh, two tones would have been nice, but I barely use tone ever, and this one has one tone, which is more than enough that I'd ever use it for. Um, another thing I was looking for when I got one is uh, the good hardware, of course, you know, the locking tuners. They're pretty simple. All they do is you put the string in and they lock the string into the pig, and then so you just thread the string through the tailpiece and bridge hold it tight, and then lock the, the peg, the little pin inside the peg, and then that's it. There's no winding around and looping under and making a, a back loop to, so they don't slide, they're just locked, period. And then you just twist up the, the uh, machine head till you're basically in tune, so kind of a nice feature. You can do without it, but 
with it, it's uh, just that much nicer. And uh, another big thing I wanted was a flat cut on the bottom. So you can get a Fender, or sorry, a Stratocaster basic shape with a flat cut, not by, not the Stratocaster, but other makes that have it um, with a flat bottom. Mainly so that it'll balance on your, you know, when you're sitting down playing, it'll sit there and balance. Sure enough, there we go, yeah. It balances, you know. And it won't kind of walk away and you're gonna fall down like that all the time, which uh, is kind of a, just something just kind of, if you have one way or the other, I'd rather have a flat bottom. So this has that, so. Uh, basically that's how we got to the ESP. I went through all the specs of all the makes, and this one had all those specs, or the majority of them at least. Of course, there's no ESP dealers in my area, so they're hard to get a hold of. Actually, um, almost kind of, I don't know how they're doing in our market-wise and stuff, but they're kind of a rare guitar to find, for me anyway. So I ordered one online, like I said earlier in the video, and as it turned out, it turned out great. And I, I I've never seen this guitar before in a shop, so I kind of ordered it, assuming, kind of, or making some assumptions when I ordered it. So anyway, I'll have some playing later in the video. Uh, this nice cherry burst, Les Paul style, just like on the Hard Rock Cafe signs and very popular with Ace Frehley and other big guitar players. And you'll see that it sounds as good as it looks and is built. Okay, uh, thanks for watching again and please have a great day. Goodbye.